If you've seen a Mazda on the road lately, odds are that it was a crossover. And that's because high-riding vehicles make up the overwhelming majority of the company's sales. And with any luck for Mazda, that very handsome car right over my shoulder should only expand on that. That right there is a 2023 Mazda CX-50. And today we're gonna spend the day with it and see if it lives up to all of the hype that's preceded it. If you're new to the Motor One channel, welcome. We're happy to have you. If you like what you see here, please subscribe to the channel and you can follow us and interact with us on social media using the handle at MotorOne.com. Now, if you're looking at this car and thinking to yourself, gee, that's just a CX-5 with a few modifications to it, I wouldn't blame you, but that's not the case. Because the CX-5 is getting on in age, this is actually on the newer platform and it's shared with the smaller Mazda 3 and Mazda CX-30. That said, this car is bigger than all of them. In terms of size, this is just a bit longer and just a bit wider than the CX-5, just to give you an example uh, of how big it is in person but this has style all on its own. It follows a playbook that we've seen used over and over and over again. Make it look rugged, make it look mean, and people will buy it. Take a look at this pretty face that is admittedly covered in bugs, and that's because we've been on the move today, including taking this car off-road, which of course we'll tell you about in just a little bit. But let's just take this thing in section by section, because something about the CX-50's overall design just works. I think it starts with the grill. That's what stands out to me more than anything else. And the size of it, it runs all the way into the headlights on this car. Uh, and that goes to just emphasize the overall width and the aggression in its stance. The black streak below the grill is something that we're seeing time and time again. Different automakers are making you pay for blacked out exterior packages, but every single CX-50 is gonna come standard with that. The lighting elements are also very elegant. The, the daytime running light signature is simple and kind of calm. And then they have these nice thin amber signals that glow orange when you're driving along, and they also function as an LED turn signal. It wouldn't be a rugged crossover without body cladding on the side of it. That's become the calling card of all of these things on the road. But where the smaller CX-30 gets overwhelmed by its body cladding, the CX-50 on the other hand, wears it quite well. And I think that has to do with the shape. It doesn't just trace the wheel arc and stays curved. It's actually more squared off and it looks more understated and kind of boxy because of it. My only gripe with the exterior design, which is overall phenomenal, is this mix of black and chrome. It's on these 20 inch wheels and it's also here on the window trim. Everything here is blacked out, matches the mirror caps. But then right here, there's this little strip of chrome sort of for no reason. And the same with the rails up above. There is an upcoming Meridian trim that's gonna fix some of those issues and it looks a lot more aggressive with some black exterior pieces. The paint palette gives you a lot to play with and the colors are very affordable. They're all south of $500, including this one, which is called Zircon Sand Metallic Phenomenal, the best one in the entire range. I can also be the first to confirm to you that this paint color happens to hide dirt very well. Otherwise, the back of the CX-50 is pretty simple, except for in this case, because this is a fully loaded model. It is badge city. CX-50, all-wheel drive, Skyactiv-G, and turbo, just so you really told people what you bought. Otherwise, I like the look here, including these nice, slim LED taillights that mimic the style of the headlights. Because this is supposed to be an off-roading adventure vehicle for so many, Mazda has made some thoughtful design touches to make life a little easier on you. The door, for example, in the rear opens a full 90 degrees to make this access space really easy. And the roof line is low on purpose so that even a shorty like myself can get up here without any issue. You can access all of your cargo up here or your rooftop tent, which by the way, the roof is designed to hold a rooftop tent on the move and hold up to three people sleeping in it when the car is stationary. This company has been on a hot streak with its interiors and luckily the CX-5 continues the trend. Everything in here is just nice. Uh, this is the top trim level that you're gonna get. So this does have real leather seating and some advantages over some of the less expensive versions of the CX-50, but it's a Mazda product. You can expect it to be top notch for the most part. I mean, take your pick of competitors with this car, things like the Subaru Forester, Honda Passport, Jeep Cherokee. This is nicer than pretty much all of them. There are very few things that I don't like, and they happen to be weird things too for what it's worth. I've never been able to jiggle a speaker back and forth in a car. That is troubling to say the least. It feels like they're missing a piece of trim to hold it in place. Also the door handle, weirdly, it's this very hard, black, scratchy plastic. And for something that you're gonna interact with a lot as the driver, they could have wrapped that in something nicer. Otherwise, I'm really liking what I see inside of the CX-50. Things in the tech department are a bit more of a mixed bag. Let me tell you what I mean. 
Mazda's design philosophy has to do with keeping things simple for the driver so they can focus on the road. But in the process of making things simple, they've actually just made things more complicated. The infotainment here is a 10.3 inch display and normally you function here with the clicky wheel. You can go through all the menus and it works just fine until you start using CarPlay or Android Auto, in which case Mazda themselves admit that a touchscreen actually works better. So now you can use it as a touchscreen if you please, but only when you're in CarPlay or Android Auto. So what you end up with is just sort of in the middle version. You're confused, do you wanna use this or do you wanna to touch the screen? My point here is that drivers are wanting more information. Cars are getting more complex. So this whole keeping things simple isn't gonna work much longer. From behind the wheel of this car, I am immediately reminded of just how much I love driving the CX-5. I mean, it's more or less my favorite compact crossover to drive, period, end of story. So my expectations for the CX-50 are high, I'll tell you that. Now this car has four cylinder engines either way. They come standard with a 2.5 liter four cylinder, making 187 horsepower. That said, the one I'm driving today is a turbocharged version, which makes a much heftier 256 horsepower. If performance is one of your top priorities, obviously you're gonna wanna go for the turbo model. And you're rewarded with pretty good acceleration, to be honest. This has a healthy torque curve and keeps pulling pretty much anywhere in the rev range. It also sounds pretty good too. You get little tastes of turbo whistle as you accelerate. I like that. The penalty, I'm looking right at it right now. I've done an average of just over 20 miles to the gallon, which is pretty far below this car's EPA rating of 23 city, 29 highway, and 25 combined. That's not so great. Throughout all the twisty canyon roads we've been around today, I've just fallen more in love with the steering feel, which is funny to talk about in a crossover. We don't do it all that often for good reason. To Mazda's credit, this has really good weight and feel to it and actually feels like somewhat of an enthusiast product. The CX-50 offers just over eight inches of ground clearance and it doesn't have any skid plates underneath. Mazda says that everything that needs to be protected is well protected enough without a skid plate. Maybe we'll take their word for it. And the off-roading that we've done today is sort of indicative of what you would do with this car. Uh, the CX-50 is a perfect contender to take you and some friends off-road to a campsite. It's not gonna be attacking Moab anytime soon. That said, if you happen to attack Moab in this car, let us know, because that's pretty cool. There isn't hill descent control. Now, the engineers have worked on the ABS to bite down on a hill and keep the car controlled like uh, a hill descent control would do, but I was kind of surprised to not see it here. It seems like a neat piece of software that a lot of these crossovers are getting these days and customers enjoy using. So there are 10, yes, 10 different trim levels for the CX-50, which is just way too many, so I'll break this down for you the best I can. This car starts at just over $27,000 when you include the $1,200 destination charge. The turbocharged engine is gonna be 10 grand on top of that. All-in, fully loaded CX-50 is gonna be just over $43,000. Now, if you look at that pricing right next to the CX-5, it's only a few hundred dollars more to start. That means this is probably gonna be the more compelling option for somebody if they already happen to be at a Mazda dealership. Looking outside of the Mazda brand at the Subaru Forester, Jeep Cherokee, and the Honda Passport, this isn't necessarily a more capable vehicle than any of those three, especially off-road, but if you're somebody who's looking for a bit more style, a bit more interior refinement and ride quality comfort, this very well could be the best option for you. Thanks for watching.